Are you particularly concerned about DHA and its role in mental health? For about 20 years now, I've been looking into the concept of the question as to whether or not deficiencies in DHA and other long-chain omega-3 fatty acids impair brain composition and therefore uh, increase the risk of depression, schizophrenia, violence, and suicide. And there's been a, uh, an overwhelming accumulation of data from many points of view that support this hypothesis. Uh, amongst those are early work that um, in countries where seafood is consumed a lot, people have very low rates of depression and very low rates of homicide compared to countries where people don't eat seafood. Now that alone is not very convincing data, but the double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trials, especially for depression, have shown that when you give people levels of omega-3 fatty acids that are consumed in Japan or Asia where, or Portugal where seafood is high, depression can resolve by 50% or better. And the, the overwhelming evidence now indicates that these, from meta-analyses of trials, indicates that omega-3 fatty acids are at least as effective as antidepressants and maybe more effective than antidepressants, but of course, the side effect profile is completely beneficial to other aspects of health. And what role does DHA play at various times of life in improving uh, mental state? Well, deficiencies of DHA, that is not getting enough, um, can occur in utero when babies are developing, uh, can occur in early childhood and, and all through life. And the, the risk profile to the brain is different depending upon the stage of deficiency. In uh, 2007, we looked at the role of mother's fish consumption, which is a primary dietary source of DHA, in pregnancy, and found that when women did not eat fish, um, it doubled the risk that their children would have low verbal IQ by the age of eight. It also, when mothers didn't eat fish, or ate less than 12 ounces a week, 340 grams a week, when mothers ate little fish, the consequence to the child at age eight was also that they had uh, op not optimal peer problems and social problems and coping problems with other children. So we think that this deficiency not only transcends IQ, but also adversely impacts behavior. Can that be corrected later in life by more DHA? The data for giving children uh, adequate amounts of EPA and DHA appears to be indicating that it improves their attention and uh, Dr. McNamara has specific data using functional magnetic imaging that it shows that you give kids DHA and it lights up but the parts of their brain makes those more active that are specifically important in focusing attention. From other studies, uh, Alex Richardson, etc., we see that uh, School performance appears to be in increasing markedly. Learning and those things what you need to have attention for. Most of the trials have been done in kids with learning disorders or abnormal problems. And um, in addition to the learning specifically, the data indicates that the behavior of the children improve. And I think this is the major piece that affects the brain throughout development. And that is that when DHA is low or deficient, people become irritable, they become depressed, or they become mean. You know, Woody Allen used to say that, um, that, that women become miserable and men become horrible. And I think that that's the, that in a, in a nutshell is the, is the profile of, of eating a diet rich in industrialized junk fats compared to eating a diet rich in healthy, evolutionarily correct uh, marine fats. And how much is it a deficiency in DHA versus an oversupply of those competing other varieties of oils? Well, this is, it's a great question to say what's, a, what's the deficiency in DHA solely and what's the role of omega-6 fatty acids in this equation. The first question is what is a level of DHA intake that uh, is comparable 
to iodine intakes or folate intakes or B12 and can we calculate them in the same way? And I, I've done that in 2009. I've used the same methodology that's been used for other nutrients and calculated out that it's a little bit about a 900 to 1,000 milligrams a day of EPA and DHA together will prevent 95% of people from most DHA related illnesses. That is increased risk of sudden cardiac death, increased risk of depression, and increased risk of developmental problems like the low, low IQ in children. Now, it is critical, the question you ask, what determines the tissue composition? Is it just the omega-3s, or and what is the role of these competing omega-6 fatty acids? Now, to understand this question, you first must understand that for millions of years of hominid evolution, we ate very few omega-6 fatty acids. And 100 years ago, they were perhaps less than 1% of the calories in the diet. 10,000 years ago, we started making grains, and in the last 100 years, most Western societies have shifted the diet to be mostly, uh, hugely reliant on seed oils that contain rich amounts of the omega-6 fatty acids. So what's normal now in the U.S. of eating 8 to 10 percent of calories from one molecule of omega-6 fatty acids is historically very strange for, for human evolution. So we think about, well, what's a normal level? And gee, if we eat more than normal levels, are they healthful or beneficial? We know from animal and human studies when we knock back the omega-6 fatty acids from 8% of calories to 1% of calories, it frees up the metabolic machinery in humans, in most humans, and they make EPA and DHA for free. You can have five-fold the levels of EPA and double the levels of DHA for free without increasing fisheries uh, without increasing fish production just by removing the omega-6s.